segment because I've got DeMarco and Orsini, two nice Italian names, sponsoring this segment of the show. So I'm going to roll out with all the Italians I can fit in the studio during this segment. New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrapini. Nice to see you, <laughs> John. Oh, God. Uh, Jefferson County Prosecuting <laughs> Attorney Matt Harvanucci. How are you doing there, Matt? How are you doing? I'm doing well. Is that Italian? It's close enough. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Tim the Knife Zaiafolino. Good to see you, Tim. How are you today? I'm great, great. Thanks for having me. Awesome, man. Great to have you here. How's that witness protection thing working out for you? Not so good now that you're on camera. Witness protection, you say? Yes. <laughs> not, not so much anymore. We've exposed you. That's right. Hey, good to see you, man. Thanks for coming in. Yesterday, uh, about three people said to me, and Matt Harvey was one of them, you need to get Tim on the program. Yesterday or day before, whichever it was. So I'm glad you were available today. Well, I'm flattered. Thank you. The, uh, the appointments have been made. And we now know who the members are of the West Virginia First Foundation. Mr. Harvey, of course, is one of those. And you are the regional director of this, as I understand it. Correct. Region 2. Region 2. Okay. How many regions are there, Tim? Six. And uh, how many members of each region? Uh, one member from each region. Uh, so a total of, of six from each DHHR region throughout the state. And Region 2, which is what we're a part of, consists of uh, eight counties. Mm -hmm. Pendleton, Grant, Mineral, Hampshire, Hardy, Morgan, Jefferson, and Berkeley. And what are you tasked with, Tim? Uh, we are tasked with uh, overseeing the distribution of the opioid settlement funds that are uh, going to be unrolled over the next number of years. Um, roughly 72.5%, I believe, of the total, which is around a billion dollars that's coming to West Virginia. Um, so the West Virginia First Foundation, which is, um, as you said, one one director from each region plus five um, appointees by the governor, which um, Matt is one of. Uh, and then I believe the AG's office is going to hire an executive director. Um, and I don't think that's happened yet. It has not. And, and just to be real clear, uh, the, the governor's appointees, of which I am one, do have to be approved by the Senate. It would be real good if you wouldn't stop talking while I'm adjusting the camera. Just keep uh, flowing. <laughs> just, just keep the conversation flowing there, Matt. Uh, so how does Matt Harvey get selected to this? And, and, and why does Matt Harvey have interest in this? Well, I, I, I did express my interest to the governor's office uh, a long, many, 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 many months ago. And, and to me, it's something that I'm passionate about. I grew up in southern West Virginia, mm -hmm. which was ground zero for uh, sure. the opioid epidemics and like i've said this 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 foundation was is unfortunately 25 years in the making and i remember uh, coming out of high school starting college and i remember the the influx of the pills into the communities and the devastation that it that it did then and it's st still doing moving to the eastern panhandle mm -hmm. i realized that no county was spared no community in west virginia has been spared from this epidemic and you know my professional career i've spent helping and and fighting this it spills over obviously into the criminal justice system i have i have for, for me my experiences are and i think this is what the governor looked at is from a law enforcement side but also have experience in in prevention and treatment you know we we do work with we have a day uh, a day report center in Jefferson County. We we'll also work with the Berkeley County Day Report Center. They're very they, they very easy to work with and gracious. Uh, we have a juvenile drug court. We have an adult drug court. We have a teen court, which I'm a board member. We have community corrections, which I'm a board member, and I'm also a board member for the Jefferson Berkeley Alliance, which is is geared towards getting into schools on the prevention side. So um, I think that that's some of the reasons why the, the, the governor looked at me is, is the, the, I have a broad experience in, in a lot of different issues and, and, know, and understand some of the nuances of this. Tim, any idea how many people applied for these positions of which Matt Harvey was selected? I do not know the answer to that question. Maybe Matt does. I'm not sure. Do you know Matt? I don't. I... I <clears throat> I know there was probably hundreds of people that sent letters in. So it's pretty impressive to get selected for this. Yes, I, I, I and I and I measure my words very carefully because 
Because I, I don't want to be seen as taking a victory lap on the backs of tens of thousands of West Virginians that have passed and all the families that have been destroyed by this. Like, mm-hmm. I, yes, it's an honor that, that the governor thinks that I have something to contribute to this, but I'm doing it to honor all those that have, have passed, mm-hmm. have, have been taken by, from us by these, these corporations and, our, and, quite frankly, a government that failed us in protecting us. And, and um, it's, it's not letting up. And there's the people that, that didn't pass away, um, you know, a lot of families have been just turned upside down by this. And it, the, the, it's countless. You know, they, they, they have someone that's incarcerated, a member of their family. They have they're a grandmother raising grandchildren or grandparents raising grandchildren. Um, the, the economic toll it's had, that's, that's not nothing. We mm-hmm. don't have a workforce that can pass a drug test. And we have all these wonderful economic opportunities coming to West Virginia. And we need that to, to help us well, right the ship. Here's my question on these settlements. And I think, you t- Tim, you said it was about a billion dollars that's going to get distributed here, right? right? So as I understand it, none of this money goes directly to families to compensate them for a loss of uh, a, a father, a mother, a, a child, or anything like that in regards to compensating them for future income or that sort of thing. This this money has guidelines that are specific to how it's used, but none of it is to replace lost income, for instance. Can you give me the parameters of the use of this money, Tim? Yeah, 24.5% of the settlement funds go directly to local governments, uh, county governments, municipalities within each region. Uh, 3% of the settlement funds go to the AG's office uh, for legal fees and such. And then 72.5% of the funds will be placed into the, um, uh, the hands of the West Virginia First Foundation, which Matt and I will be a part of and um, will have a voice there in, in regard to uh, – Uh, developing a plan as to how the funds will be distributed Um, I believe that uh, I I don't want to go in with a bunch of my own you know uh, opinions and ideas I I really want to spend some time uh, meeting with folks throughout the region I've already started doing that to to find out exactly what's happening what kind of work is happening and what sorts of needs uh, the various people and agencies have within our region Um, but uh, I I do have a couple of ideas and and um, uh, one of them, I think, is is that um, you know a, a portion of this money um, should be uh, invested to have long term returns. Um, I think if we just handed out you know seven hundred fifty million dollars and said here go spend it, um, that would just be foolish. So um, s- some type of investments need to need to take place. And then um, uh, you know I think of just Berkeley County alone. I mean, how many? How many children right now in Berkeley County um, are suffering because their parents mm-hmm. um, have been suffering from substance use disorder? Um, their parents get incarcerated. Uh, they're removed from their families' homes. Um, their lives are just in shambles. And if something is not done to, to uh, address uh, the problem of our youth and, and how it's impacted them, well, I think we're... We're missing the boat. Would it be appropriate that some of these funds be used for counseling? Would it be appropriate that some of these funds be used to supplement education, tutoring, uh, perhaps even college scholarships? or a- Any of the above. I mean, an approved purpose, uh, as outlined by the uh, AG's office, is uh, items such as employing evidence-based treatment strategies for substance use disorder, substance use prevention strategies, law enforcement efforts to curtail drug distribution, supporting addiction recovery programs or decreasing the oversupply of illicit and illicit opioids. So that's kind of broad, obviously, mm-hmm. but um, I, our DHHR office in here in Martinsburg right now, they, these are the people that are dealing with child protective services cases, and they are grossly understaffed. Um, you know, there's so much uh, assistance and help that the children who are impacted by this problem in our area need that they don't have it. Um, so I don't know exactly how to fix that problem, but I think it needs to be closely looked at, and a plan needs to be de- developed. I, you face an awesome responsibility, and, and Matt, I can't think of anybody I would rather see in a position to be one of the overseers of, of this money. And But I will tell you, I th- think I can speak on behalf of, of taxpayers in, in the area. Nothing makes me more nervous than uh, a, a political entity 
finding itself with a billion extra dollars. And there are two there are two sides to all of this. Part of it is to punish the the pharmaceutical companies who facilitated all of this. I don't know that a, that this is enough, quite honestly, to do that. But that's 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 settled business. Now there's the business of, of distributing the money. Um, what are there guardrails? I mean, there's a. I'm just picking random examples that are kind of silly, but I I foresee this is a wonderful opportunity for the the um, juvenile court to get all new furniture and new wall hangings and you know that's what because it's all it, it's part of the the settlement money and it, it's loosely related to opioids. How do you? What's the mechanism for voting where it goes to and where it doesn't go to? Is there a consensus that has to be drawn, or how does that work? I, I don't think that's been determined yet. Um, you know, I, the reason why this is going into a foundation at seventy-two point five percent, I believe, and and remember that this arrangement was approved by the counties and the municipalities to the lawsuit the parties to the lawsuit, which were the, the, the government entities in the state. And I think it was 98% signed off on it and agreed that this is the way it would be done. And, and so there would be as much uh, spread out representation across the state so one area wouldn't benefit over the other. Um, I see that we don't want to have <laughs> – John, I know you're a newcomer to West Virginia, and we're really glad to have you. But it, there was – that I, I can remember Routergate. Where they spent millions of dollars on these overpriced routers in West Virginia that were they found in boxes set in, in a basement somewhere in Charleston, um, and that's the kind of stuff that's unacceptable. I think that, and I think with some of the governor's picks, he's putting people on there that have financial experience to kind of round out some, the experience with the board. I'm not speaking for the governor, but that's my observation. Um, with, with some of the picks that they have that oversight of finances, which is just as important because if that money doesn't get to where it needs to go to be maximized to make a difference then we failed and and I think that there will absolutely be and I, I that I and this is what I would support if as a potential board member is I would support some sort of accountability and oversight I I kind of envision that a lot of these community organizations will will submit like grant applications to the foundation and there'll be a vetting process and that requires some sort of financial oversight and and maybe that would be a, a good use of funds is that the that the foundation could come up with um, a uh, a way to help these these nonprofits keep track of that money themselves so you know it's it's like a business person they have a, or an inventor they have a really good idea but they don't the business part kind of gets past them well you would really want that person with the really good idea the inventor to be able to thrive and not have to think about the business maybe that's a p potential with the foundation that they could take the weight of of the 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 compliance issues and work be partners with these local organizations and then let them focus on recovery pre pre uh, and prevention is there room within the program for um part of the foundation funds to be put into lack of a better term an annuity that rather than money to be spent and gone it's money to be um, invested and then to fund programs for many years to come well, I think Tim Is was referring to that earlier yeah good yes. Tim yes 100% uh, and I Matt and I have have the responsibility to to take a look at the things that you're mentioning um, you know we don't want to just give the money out and let it be gone um, the, you know, whatever this money is used to be invested into needs to be sustained long term. And I think um, the smartest way to do that, I mean, what's what's 5% of $300 million, like close to $20 million a year, I think. Um, and $300 million isn't even half of what um, the West Virginia First Foundation is going to be um, overseeing the, the distribution of. So developing grant programs, investing the money, um, probably even hiring um, – you know, a, a group of folks to uh, uh, administer and, and manage the grants and, and do exactly what you're what you're talking about, overseeing, um, you know, the way that the, the various agencies that are access the money spend it. We do not want I, I do not want uh, money being given out to programs that are going to buy new furniture. Um, you know, uh, I don't I don't think that's a great use of the funds. I don't think that's the purpose of it. 
Um, Who's auditing these funds uh, once some of them are spent or put in use, Tim? To be determined. And, and uh, the West Virginia First Foundation still hasn't even formally met. Um, as Matt mentioned, the, the governor's most recent appointments need to be approved by the Senate. And I think at that time, um, the... Uh, well, that's not until January? Well, I don't know. I don't know if they could... Um, I don't know if they could consider that during a special session or not, uh, or, or not special, but interim session. Yeah. Once the once the, the that's complete, though, the, the 11 members are now 100 percent official. The AG's office needs to hire an executive director, and I, I assume that's going to happen shortly. And once that happens, uh, an initial meeting will co be convened and these conversations will begin. I assume the executive director position will be a paid position. Are any of the other positions paid positions? No. You're, you're, you mean staff or you're, like you're voluntary? Board correct. And you're voluntary, correct? It's, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want any money compensation for this. No, I, I couldn't take it anyway. Mm -hmm. So. You mean legally? Yes, legally. I couldn't take it anyway. Because you're already a state employee? I'm already an elected official, yes. Are you considered a state or a county employee, Matt? I am an accounting employee that represents the state of West Virginia. Okay. If that, that makes it clear as mud. Somewhat. And, and you know, I, I'll just point out, like, I, I was able to, I was picked by the National District Attorney Association a, a few years ago to be, uh, to collaborate on a publication that went out to all the prosecutors nationwide, a white paper on, on the opioid response for the prosecutor. And I was happy to be selected to that i mean so this is not a, an, an issue that i'm not <laughs> that I, this is something that i really really uh, w uh have a lot of knowledge on spend a lot of my time because i feel like i owe it mm -hmm. to my to my fellow west virginians um but here are the things that west virginia has went through um we were, we're leading in deaths but we're also leading in solutions as well and so i think that this this the settlement and i agree with john it's not enough it's not enough but it's it was good compared to what the other states got for the settlement but it, it, as far as as justice and retribution it'll never be enough until the the corporate ceos are in prison or facing their maker for what they've done um so i think some of the, our creative solutions from these these brilliant and resourceful people from around West Virginia could be amplified and we could be a national leader in a lot of of this recovery effort is there a manner in place to accept public input as to how legitimate public input not like send me a check for five hundred dollars you know kind of input but legitimate public input about how some of this money could be deployed currently there's there's nothing like that in place but I suspect um, in the coming months uh, things like that it w will happen. I mean, I've um, the Berkeley County IT department has uh, assisted me with creating a listserv um, that uh, folks can uh, be a part of if they'd like to receive communications about um, exactly what we're talking about here. Um, anyone from the from the public even uh, can be a part of that listserv. Send an email to email svr at berkeleywv.org. Can you repeat that, Tim? Email svr at berkeleywv.org and uh, put in the subject line, subscribe West Virginia first in your name, and you can be added to that list. Um, I've, I've been distributing that to folks that I've talked to. I'll continue doing that, and um, that's a way that uh, I can communicate um, pretty quickly with everyone who's interested to, to learn about what's going on with this process and when our first meeting will be. I'll announce that and exactly what we talk about. Um, I mean, the, the conversations that we have uh, within those meetings isn't going to be secret. Um, you know, West Virginians need to know about what's going on and um, how the money can be accessed by by agencies that are involved with the work or want to get involved with the work. Is the money managed by the foundation itself, or does it fall under the treasurer's office, or how? It's currently being managed by an attorney. Um, uh, it's going to be transferred to the West Virginia First Foundation when it's officially in place. <laughs> We're still not quite there. Do you know what the actual final amount will be that gets deposited into that account? 
I believe the payments are going to are going to come come out uh, come in over a period of years. Um, I know some of the payments have already been received. I don't know what the total amount that's in the account is currently. Mm -hmm. I think it's um, between three and four hundred thousand dollars. I've heard both numbers three or four hundred million, million. Excuse me, three or four hundred million dollars, which is a significant amount. That's the start. That's not the ultimate final amount of the distribution it's, to West Virginia. It's not. It? Yeah. It's not. And and I don't know which one of those numbers is true. Um, but but it's a lot's re ready to go. Is ready there a timetable or goal as to when the first bit of this money starts to get deployed? I wish I could answer that question. I, I think uh, once we have an initial uh, meeting, um, we'll have better information to provide to folks. Will priority go to uh, families uh, who were victimized by this specifically in terms of programs initially, or is that all still under advisement? There's truly not a plan in place. John? Moving back, going back to the court cases that started all of this and the court victories that started all of this, has the, you we're talking about recovery at this point, has the assault stopped or slowed down? Are, are we no longer flooding the market with oxy and, and, and is, is that part of the settlement against the, the pharmaceutical companies? Do you know? Has, has the sourcing been solved? So, so five, five years ago, six years ago, um, I, can, I can talk to you about um, uh, our drug screening at the Day Report Center. Um, people who were testing positive for oxycodone was, was, was common. Uh, the pills were readily available on the streets. Um, you know, people could buy a, uh, an, an oxycotton or an oxycodone pill for 30 or forty dollars, and um, they were they were abused. Um, that really is not the case anymore. We we get very few positive drug screens now for oxycodone. Now it's 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 almost all fentanyl. Um, fentanyl is is readily available on the street. It sounds crazy, but it is. Um, even the, the the heroin, good old fashioned heroin that used to be um, morphine based, um, is is not even really around anymore. It's all fentanyl. You know, there's a really interesting book, John, called Dreamland, that that analyzes the uh, the the pharmaceutical industry and and the Mexican cartels. That they had this symbiotic relationship uh, where the cart with the the loosening of regulations and the farm the the pharmacies able to not pharmacies but the the manufacturers and distributors able to to push out their their representatives and to sell these pills and to lie to medical providers about the the harm that they can do and, and how the cartel uh either somehow found a way to to link that in these cities where these interesting um relationships formed and exploded all over the united states Dreamland. Dreamland. All right. Uh, Tim and Matt. Uh, Matt, you'll be obviously staying throughout the rest of the show as a co-host. But uh, a minute left, a final thought on uh, this program and you know, your involvement in it. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to being able to represent Region 2, um, working with Matt and, and uh, doing everything that we can to, um, to uh, see that our region uh, has, some, has some needs that are met. Um, don't know exactly what that's going to look like. Um, I know that there are a lot of people uh, who live within Region 2 who uh, very desperately need to be involved in substance abuse treatment, um, but they don't have transportation. Well, I, I can tell you, drug dealers provide transportation to support their business. Uh, if somebody lives out on uh, Haymaker Road out near Sleepy Creek and they need uh, a couple of bags of fentanyl, a drug dealer is going to drive out there and deliver it. Uh, well, most treatment centers don't, don't provide that kind of service. Um, I'm proud to say that the Berkeley County Commission supports transportation needs for folks who need to be involved in treatment. Um, we have five vans at the Day Report Center that we use and several drivers that um, that's their full time job is driving out throughout Berkeley County, picking people up, bringing them into treatment uh, and then driving them home. Um, I think every treatment agency in the region that does this kind of work needs to have that ability. And I, th I think of uh, the number of people in terms of, you know, I think of the jail bill, a hundred people um, who don't have transportation to treatment are going to end up incarcerated uh, because of their drug problem. Well, a hundred people in jail for one year is about $1.7 million that the Berkeley County Commission has to pay. Well, 
you could you could transport a hundred people with a couple of vans and a couple of drivers to the tune of probably less than a hundred thousand dollars a year, uh, maybe a little bit more. So um, it only makes sense to to support those efforts. Uh, but but that's just one more idea. I, I have a number. I, I'd like to uh, continue to meet with folks and find out what the needs are, um, how this money can best be utilized. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Sounds like you're onto something there with the transportation idea, Tim. Matt, I just echo Tim's uh, sentiments. Um, you know, there's there's going to be a, a lot of good ideas, and and the the ones that can maximize the benef- the benefit of the money will be the ones I think that are going to get a high priority. And uh, you know, kudos to Tim for for taking the initiative to have this informal listserv that's it's not it's not officially connected to the board because the board doesn't officially exist yet. Mm-hmm. But just to, to ha- start this listing process and this learning process, and so you know, I'm I'm happy to to have Tim so close to me to be able to work together, and and I've, you know, having just currently wrapped up a year of serving as the president of the Association of Counties, I've I've been very fortunate to develop to develop relationships with commissioners and local elected officials from across the state, and um, you know, I'm going to be able to continue that service to you know, finally finally defeat this for West Virginians once and for all. Thank you, sir. Thank you.